So Yaminu posted a video about a month ago called Seven Things Only Noob Bikers Do, and we're here to talk about that. Also, you guys keep talking about this giant arm that sticks out when I do videos, so I'm gonna go hold my mic. So quick spoiler warning, if you haven't seen his video yet, make sure you do so, because I will be going over a lot of the stuff that he talks about, and I'll be making it transformative and educational. That's called fair use. I had to write these down because I am terrible at staying on topic as you guys keep pointing out, so let's jump into it. So number one, U-turn. So in the U-turn, he talks about running wide, putting your foot down, and then dropping your bike. Now those are all things that new riders do, and it's not that bad, except for the drop in the bike part, and we can talk a little bit more about that. But if you run too wide, it's because you're not counterbalancing that well yet. Okay, so that comes with practice, and you want to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. There are parking lot exercise videos out there. I have a few, a bunch of people have more, and I think you should check those out. So the second portion of the U-turn is putting your foot down. So putting your foot down is not that big of a problem, and here's why. When you put your foot down, that's just because you have, once again, that lack of counterbalancing. So if you have to put your foot down, go ahead and do so. I'd rather you do that than drop your bike, especially in class or in front of people so you're not super embarrassed. There's only really a few risks of putting your foot down in the real world outside of training. One is that you're putting your foot down because you lost balance of you and the bike, so you're going to have a ton of weight on that foot. When you have a ton of weight on that foot, if you have no traction on the soles of your feet and the road is nice and slippery or have oil, guess what? You're going to slip and slide out of there. Another thing is that if you have your foot down and it gets trapped, let's say, in a tar snake or in a crack pothole or whatever, and you start to tip over and fall, there's a good chance that you could snap your foot or ankle and have some problems with that. So when you do a U-turn, making sure you don't have your foot down can have some really good benefits benefits. But at the end of the day, if you know what the road surface is, go ahead and put your foot down and make that U-turn as best as possible. Now, if you start dropping the bike, we're starting to have some issues because you never put your foot down and you're so concerned about not putting your foot down. But if you're going to do it on hard mode, make sure you have actual protection for your bike. So have some sliders, some crash guards, whatever it is, so that if you do drop the bike, it's going to hit those things and not your engine and have oil and whatever everywhere else. So number two, stalling. So he talks a little bit about stalling. And what I got from his video is that typically you're going to have problems at a stoplight or starting on a hill. New riders have a problem with starting on a hill and that is one of the biggest requested videos that I have. Wait, I thought I had a video of that already. Yep, got a video about me starting on a hill, so check it out if you want. The biggest thing about stalling is that yes, you can drop your bike pretty easily because you don't have the balance of four wheels like you do in a car, you only have two on a motorcycle. So there's a good chance that when you do stall and you have that jerky movement, if you don't have those handlebars straight, guess what? You're gonna tip left or tip right. Same thing can be said about braking improperly, you're gonna drop the bike left or right. The biggest takeaway on this one is making sure you understand where your friction zone is on the bike. And the best way to do that is to get on your bike, grab that clutch lever, squeeze it all the way down this is zero you go to one two three four five five is all the way let out now that you understand that squeeze it all the way back to zero if you have your engine on or whatever it is and you're about to get going in gear and you release it down to one two and three about two and three is when you start to have that engine take over so two three and four out of that one through five that is your friction zone inability to wheelie I'm not even gonna try this one. Number four, waddling. Okay, so waddling is basically power walking. I like to call it the penguin walk, the power walk, whatever you wanna talk about it. This is one of the very first things you learn in your MSF BRC1 class. So exercise one in the MSF is motorcycle familiarization out on the range. Exercise two is learning how to do your friction zone. During exercise one, we talked about that whole zero to five and finding your friction zone and understanding that and actually doing power walking within the staging area. Exercise two has a few parts to it. I'm gonna have a video popping up right now that's going to demonstrate a little bit of what part one looks like. It's me teaching my wife how to ride and it's basically going from heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe, finding that friction zone. Part two during this exercise is definitely the power walking and waddling section, okay? And that's where you're going to start moving your feet with a little bit of assistance of the engine. Part three of the exercise is actually lifting your feet up after you get enough speed to stabilize the bike. And that right there is the biggest thing when it comes to number four, waddling. You want to be able to lift your feet off the bike because when you have your feet off the bike, that means you have enough stability with speed and it allows you to have your pegs and feet connected. So now you have a full connection with the bike. If you have full connection with the bike, that means you have more control of the bike itself and you're not having your feet dangle around and possibly get caught on something. So how do we fix this? Speed is not the enemy here. Appropriate speed is the biggest thing you wanna take away from this. Once you figure out your throttle control and friction zone, you're able to get enough speed that when walking, it's actually gonna be a detriment and you feel like the bike is stable and you put your feet onto the pegs. From there, you focus on making sure that you're shifting correctly and have proper 
throttle control. So go out there and practice in a parking lot if you're brand new to this. Number five, afraid of road hazards and basic weather. I'm a pretty fair weather rider out there and I typically don't ride in rain or bad weather, but normal weather I do. And road hazards you have zero control over just like the weather, but they're gonna stay there whether the weather is nice or not. At the end of the day, both of these really boil down to having trust in your tires and making sure you have enough traction on your tires. Bad weather and road hazards are basically traction reducing elements that will cause you to drop your bike, fall or crash or whatever it is. So make sure you do your T-clock and do a pre-ride check, a weekly check, a monthly check, so you can check your tire depth, see if there's any damage to the tire itself. Make sure your tires are properly inflated with the right PSI. But with this one, it comes with a little of a mental aspect and not necessarily just physical. You still need to have a healthy fear of these road hazards. And what I mean by healthy fear is that it's gonna be a little bit scary and you should be a little bit scared because you definitely don't wanna hit a pothole. You also don't wanna hit that tar snake in the summertime where it's nice and malleable and get your tires stuck in the crack. So making sure that you have this healthy fear of it means that you're gonna try your best to avoid it. If you're not scared of it, you're gonna keep running them over and over and over, but before you know it, you're gonna dump the bike, crash the bike, damage your bike, whatever it is going into that pothole. Make sure you know how to handle these risks with proper training. Number six, excessive input. So he talks about slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That is something that is taken from many different industries and different communities out there. And that is something that I learned primarily in the firefighting service. As a new firefighter recruit, I was getting yelled at for being too slow, but that is what the instructors wanna do. And we tried our best to move fast, 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 made so many mistakes. Towards the end of the academy and now as a 11 year veteran, I understand why they were doing that. They wanted us to make mistakes because we're rushing our asses off. With inexperience and trying to be fast, you're not going to be smooth. So the more you practice slow and smooth inputs, the better and better and better you're going to get. Before you know it, you're doing it super fast and smooth because you gradually got yourself to that position. The biggest takeaway when trying to be fast as a new rider is you're not going to be as smooth as you think you are. If you're not smooth, you're going to be putting really bad inputs in the bike. When you put bad inputs in the bike, your tires are going to lose traction. Now, why is that? I'm glad you asked. If you do a very quick pull of the front brake, guess what? It's not going to be able to have that mechanical traction with the ground, and it's going to actually slide out from underneath you. So if you do nice, smooth, and slow progressive braking, it's going to be able to grab the ground and then stop you in time. With experience, though, you're going to be able to squeeze faster and faster and faster with progressive brake pressure, which is going to allow you to stop faster and faster and faster, but you're still very smooth because you trained yourself that way. If you find yourself having very quick jerky movements, let's say in the swerve, but not the braking, you're not very competent when it comes to training in the swerve. So go ahead and focus a little bit more on that weakness and get yourself nice and smooth, just like you are with braking. Number seven, buying too much bike. When I heard Yami Noob was giving away bikes on his Patreon and on his website, it kind of concerned me a little bit because he talks about the Turbo Busa quite a bit. But what then I realized he's actually giving away really good, reasonable bikes at a lower CC. CCs and power is just one component, and I want to talk a little bit Bit more about the other ones but basically at the end of the day the more power you have for a new rider the greater chance that you're going to crash it because a new rider doesn't know how to handle that power so having a lower cc bike is actually very good i've been a patron of his for a while now and i really want one of those bikes to me total bike size and ergonomics is just as important as too many cc's or too powerful of a bike i talk about this extensively in my videos but making sure that you have full control of all the levers primary controls is very important so if you pick a giant bike and you can't even reach the forward controls with your tiny short legs, that's not the bike for you, even if it is a 250. So go out there, sit on a bunch of bikes, do some demo rides if you possibly can after you've gotten some training so you don't crash their bike, and then pick the bike that is as close to your body and riding style as possible. Also check online for aftermarket parts because you can actually change the ergonomics of your bike by buying some new things. For instance, you can buy new handlebar risers that will pull the handlebars closer to you if you are shorter. You can also buy different style of forward, mid, or rear controls. And then you can buy a seat that will possibly change the total seat height so now you can flat foot the ground instead of tippy toe it at the stoplight. One thing I really like about Yami Noob is that he's very informative and entertaining. If you've ever been a student in one of my classes, then you know that I like to make sure that you are having a good time while getting the information. So maybe it's high time I start doing that on my YouTube channel. And once again, thank you so much Yami Noob for posting this and I'll be seeing you guys later.